Hello, I'm Michael Miller, cannabis editor for the LA Weekly and associate publisher, and here at the Green Market Summit, hosted by the Green Market Report. And today we have the honor and privilege of interviewing a number of retired athletes, Care of Athletes for Care, the preeminent advocacy organization for health and wellness uh, of retired athletes, and one of the greatest advocacy organizations in the nonprofit space associated with the benefits of cannabis, CBD, and health and wellness. Today, I'm thrilled to be with Riley Cote, one of my hockey heroes from the day. And Riley's gonna tell us a little bit about his personal journey, his personal journey through the sport, transitioning out of the sport, and what he's doing today. Pleasure to see you, Riley. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good to see you as well. It's a pleasure, man. So what is going on with you these days? Oh man, a lot of traveling. Yeah, I've been uh, all over the map, just uh, you know, along with the uh, Athletes for Care program, education, and uh, my own Hemp Thrive CBD uh, brand as well as keep me keep me on the move. So it's been fun. You found a good CBD brand to help you out? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's what, exactly what uh, what this this mission kind of uh, paid for me. You know, it was uh, providing sustainable alternatives to. Um, the traditional protocols of of, of medicine, you know, uh, I think uh, the cat's out of the bag that we've been systematically and fundamentally misled when it comes to managing chronic pain and inflammation, anxiety and sleep, and there's clearly a better alternatives for that. And I think the cannabis and hemp plant have uh, have proven to to be a solution for those uh, for those types of uh, for those types of symptoms. No question. Well, thanks to folks like yourselves. Let's uh, press the rewind button a little bit. Um, back to the day, how many years did you play in the league? I played eight years of professional hockey and four with the Philadelphia Flyers. Retired in 2010 at the age of 28. Laundry list of uh, physical injuries. I, I was a fighter, you know, banger, grinder, and uh, I had my fair share of concussions uh, through, the, through the fights. And um, it kind of pushed me into the space of uh, self-discovery and, and healing. Um, and, and really, spiritually too, I really spiritually, absolutely, yeah, that's a big, big part of it, you know. Um, I think what I've learned from sports is that it's very egocentric, and you're, you're so worried about yourself and, and this identity of, a, of an athlete in this case. And you know, when that's over, you have to re redesign yourself, reinvent yourself, and find yourself in a sense. So there was a, a sense of ego death, uh, but also you know, really finding myself uh, outside of the game of hockey, and then really finding my own personal health. Sure. Let's talk a little bit about the recovery process and the healing process when you were in the league. Um, clearly, um, the NHL had a strict policy with respect to any form of cannabis. Um, I imagine that cannabis was still used by athletes quietly or a wink wink to get through their injuries. But the biggest problem, as I understand, is the being pushed consistently, narcotics or opiates, to maintain your physical strength and to get you back on the ice. Is that an accurate representation? That is, that is very accurate, yeah. Um, for me personally, I, I think I've been blessed. Uh, I was introduced to cannabis at a young age and have had a relationship with it for some time, you know, th through my junior hockey career and then into my pro hockey career um, in all leagues, including the NHL. Um, NHL was the only league that I had got tested for THC, but um, nonetheless, it was a, a real strong ally of mine in the midst of, uh, of you know, the, the toxic, um, you know, pharmaceuticals that were, were kind of dealt out through the locker room. So I think I had, a, I say, a, an advantage because I had a relationship with cannabis previous to being introduced to this world of, uh, of pharmaceuticals, which I hadn't been introduced to before I turned pro. So um, using cannabis, uh, especially when I turned pro, it, it really started to um, speak to me. I really started to understand what it was doing, uh, especially when I turned pro, I started fighting, fighting for a living. And um, when I, that's when I really started to identify with the therapeutic um, and, and medicinal benefits that the, the cannabis plant was giving me, just calming the nervous system, managing the anxiety the night before a fight in a game, and then helping me sleep. So that was when I really started to understand that there was something more than what we'd been told. You know, fast forward to when I was with the Flyers, we were getting tested three or four times a year, and I was still using cannabis on a regular basis. It was one of those things that uh, I'd kind of understood the drug testing, that they really weren't penalizing people 
that were getting tested for THC, uh, talking to other teammates and you know opponents and, and friends in the league. Uh, it was one of those things that it was uh, you know risk versus re reward, you know. Uh, so I just ran the risk, you know, just knowing that uh, I potentially could get slammed for this. But uh, I knew how it was helping me cope with the daily grind of life, let alone the daily grind of, of uh, you know, professional sports. So uh, luckily enough, I didn't ever have um, the substance abuse program call me up and and you know throw me in there. But um, uh, it certainly helped. Uh, but the, the the challenge for me when I when I made the NHL was traveling uh, via plane. And that's when I started kind of leaving my, my cannabis products behind and started to just kind of adapt this, well, the traditional way of managing these, the recovery process. And that was with, with uh, you know, anti-inflammatories and, you know, Ambien and, and that whole bit. Um, so that's when I really started to really understand how, how cannabis was affecting me in a positive way and how these pharmaceutical drugs were really impacting me in a negative way. Uh, they, were, they were trying to accomplish the same thing, but one is a, a spirit-driven plant, and the other one is, you know, uh, a spiritless, uh, you know, medicine that really has a lot of side effects. So, um, you know, for me, it was it, it was very obvious. I, I think for people that hadn't consumed cannabis uh, previous, it was it was hard for them to understand. You know, so when I retired, I guess I had a an advantage, um, if you could, what would call it that, where I. I already knew how I was feeling between the two of them, and I knew which direction I wanted to go, and I just made a choice, and that was the beginning of my path in the space. And what came first, the idea to launch a product line or your advocacy? Did a light bulb go off for you? What in you, Riley, said, I've learned, but I also want to help and teach other people? Yeah, the advocacy and education were, were way before the product line. Uh, I, mean, I retired in 2010. 2011, I started a nonprofit called the Hemp Heals Foundation, really focusing on nutrition, the hemp nutrition, you know, the digestibility of the, the, the hemp seed, the nutritional profile, and then bleeding into the industrial applications. And then I started to understand these non psychotropic cannabinoids like CBD. So the first five, six years, even before Athletes for Care was formed, was just strictly pound the pavement talking about cannabis and, and all its forms and how it can help not just public health but environmental and economic health as well and then eventually uh, my advocacy efforts led to the really the foundation and platform of the, the, the sports world and started meeting these other athletes different sports that had similar stories similar experiences with cannabis in, in one way shape or form and um, you know, the circuit continued and then we kind of made it official and, and, and created an organization called Athletes for Care to, to, really, to really hone in on, say specifically the athlete, um, the, uh, creating a support system, uh, offering alternative medicines, but, but not selfishly just for athletes, you know, using that platform to, to magnify this public health crisis that we've kind of created um, in the West here specifically. Um, but um, also to, to, to engage in research initiatives for the general public. You know, the, the, the common man has the exact same symptoms as the athlete. You know, pain is pain, inflammation is inflammation, and, 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 and the list goes on. So it's just, you know, really using that, I say, the powerful p position of, of the athlete and the platform of the athlete to, to really bring this message home. Sure, terrific. And so you're in a period of advocacy, you're retired. What's the light bulb moment where you say, I want to do my own thing. I'm looking for things that will help me and I think I can do it better than what's out there. Well, I think it was 2013 when I started to be introduced to, to actual CBD products when I started actually experimenting and it's been since then that I've actually been using them. But uh, it was then, I guess when 2014 came around when that, that, that the previous farm bill had been uh, signed into law where it went state by state, I saw this market really starting to form itself and. Um, I wasn't sure if that if I, if I needed to get into it right now or at that moment. I uh, kind of positioned myself to kind of explore and and, and see where this where, where this was going. So the idea was planted in say 2013, 2014 in that range. I didn't uh, actually launch our product line until uh, last year. Um, there was a lot of education, advocacy. There was really a lot of uh, vetting, uh, you know, vetting from whether farmers or processors, and and really, um, st I really want to stand behind a, a quality product and and set that standard of not just selling out to you know Joe Blow's white label solution and 
um, you know, that was really part of it too, was just, you know, navigating um, the real players and, and the, you know, and the imposters. So, um, but, uh, you know, it's always, it's always, it's been there for a long time. It's just, you know, manifest in the last, last year and a bit. So tell us a little bit about the product itself. Absolutely. So we, uh, our company is called Body Check Wellness and we're a wellness company, uh, really focusing in on hemp extract and infused uh, hemp capsules and, and topicals. Um, we wanted to separate ourselves a little bit, uh, not just being a CBD oil company. So we, we do obviously um, really take pride in, in that portion of it, but being progressive uh, and being honest um, that Mother Nature offers more than just the hemp and cannabis plant as a healing tool. So um, as we know, Mother Nature has given us an array of different uh, healing herbs, roots, and, 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 and plants to, to increase our wellness and longevity. And uh, we wanted to uh, really separate ourselves with, um, you know, in entering the fungi kingdom. So uh, one of our products is, is, is somewhat unique. I would think uh, it's, a, it's a full spectrum hemp capsule infused with the six different um, mushrooms, uh, all clinically proven for... Uh, brain health, uh, clarity, focus, endurance, uh, immunity. Um, so really tapping into that world, knowing that the mushroom kingdom is, is, is essentially, um, I say untapped. Uh, it's 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 just like cannabis, I guess. It's 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 misunderstood, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of connection between the two. If you want to look at uh, you know the nutritional element of of mushrooms and comparing it to the hemp plant, you know, and then getting into the medicinal side and getting into the you know uh, the industrial applications and economics. So mushrooms are you know very very powerful as you read about them and learn about them, and they're ancient as, as ancient as the cannabis plant. So just wanted to really focus on the brain, brain health. Uh, uh, in my previous life, I was a fighter. Like I said earlier, and you know, been punched in the face many of times. So just really, you trying can't to tell your nose is perfect. Oh, perfect from this <laughs> angle. And then you put it in the light, and it uh, it shows its true colors. But uh, movie star Tom Cruise looks <laughs> right. <laughs> Got a couple of different angles here, but uh, but yeah, really focusing on brain health. You know, I'm obsessed with the brain. Um, you know, the concussion issue, the CTE. Um, you know, the U.S. government holds a patent on cannabinoids as neuroprotectants and antioxidants. So. You know, once you understand that and make, make some connections, um, it, it, it makes a lot of sense for me, t um, not just from an infl inflammatory standpoint, but from a brain health standpoint to really focus in on that and uh, create a product that supports that. Uh, this is one of the first products I've seen that combines um, both mushrooms and um, byproducts of the hemp plant. Um, what was the catalyst for that? Do you have sort of a botanical um, background? Were you working with a team that made that suggestion or source had some either anecdotal or some type of uh, evidential data that the two of those combined would have a beneficial effect? Well, I think when I hopped on my journey of uh, you know, personal growth and spiritual development, I started taking a few classes through American Institute of Holistic Theology, started learning about uh, just plant medicine in general, uh, a little bit of Ayurvedic medicine and Chinese medicine, and, and the mushroom is, is is sacred. You know, it's 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 been around since the start of time. I think previous to plants, the, the fungi kingdom is is kind of mastered this world. So there's a ton of uh, of information and research on these different uh, types of mushrooms. Uh, for, for years, and uh, so I was introduced to this information at the same time I was kind of introduced to these different elements of the cannabis and hemp plant. So I always had in the back of my mind, I was equally obsessed with the mushroom kingdom than I was the, the plant kingdom, and specifically the hemp and cannabis plant. So um, when it was t when it was time to create a product, that was you know I had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to do that, and I seen the products that were you know in the marketplace, and there were a lot of the same exact things. It was just you know white labeling, just standard oil. And we do have, you know, full spectrum oils and, and isolates and that, um, which work wonderful. But uh, this, I just wanted to, again, separate ourselves and have kind of a brain formula and just uh, attack the market with something a little bit unique. But uh, it's, it's always been a passion of mine. I love mushrooms equally as, as much as I do hemp and cannabis. And I think the next big play um, is psilocybin in, in, in that world. So uh, we're, we're, we're getting there. Sure. Um, what are the values that an athlete brings to the launch of a new business as an entrepreneur? I think the biggest thing is uh, is work ethic. They got drive, they're disciplined if they're, you know, at least kept in their lane. Um, and, and, and they really do want to use, you know, their, their, their platform to do better. You know, I think uh, what I've learned is that these guys just need to be thrown in their lane. You know, a lot of, a lot of energy they have, but um, you know, when you're playing pro sports or any sport for that matter, 
everything is very regimented, you know, from the schedule they hand you at the start of the season, you know, the, the daily schedule for video practice workouts, uh, to telling you what to wear, what to eat, everything is regimented for you. So I think when you're on your own, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, dis it's a distracted behavior. And I think athletes all have these unique qualities of, you know, work ethic and attitude and teamwork and these powerful qualities, but if it's not harnessed in the right direction, it can get lost. So I think, um, you know, uh, I think once I had this definitive purpose, it was easy for me to take all these, um, these, these skills that I had, you know, had honed for, for years and just uh, being a pro and, um, you know, really started focusing those efforts on um, a specific product line that was outside of sports, but nonetheless, um, you know, was able to use those uh, as, a, as a powerful vehicles to help uh, grow the brand. You're terrific. Let's talk for a minute about Athletes for Care. Um, in addition to being an advocacy organization for health and wellness, tell me a little bit more about the multifold um, areas that Athletes for Care is interested in, the nature of folks that are involved, and how our viewers can get involved and support the organization. Sure. Um, Athletes for Care is a few layers now. Originally, it was it started out as a, a support system for, say, retiring or retired players. We saw a lot of guys struggling with, um, whether it's pain issues, uh, identity crisis, um, yeah, just substance abuse, um, and a lot of this stemmed off when they transitioned out of the game. They were they were dealing with pain and suffering with unsustainable resources. Again, the traditional you know, medicines that we were talking about. So there's a lot of struggle, a lot of darkness there. So um, as that began to roll out, we, you know, that's still part of, a big part of what we do is helping these guys, you know, offering education and in introducing these guys to alternatives. Not just hemp and cannabis, uh, there's, there's a many other alternatives as well, but you know, that seems to be um, you know, a primary focus of ours because it's very real and it, and it works almost immediately. So just helping these guys you know, fill their toolbox up with sustainable tools. And then it evolved into, you know, opportunity. As we know, the cannabis and hemp space has, uh, there's a lot of opportunity, you know, and, and we're in the space of healing and helping others. So um, you talk about, you know, the ego death we talked about earlier and giving these guys a new definitive purpose, you know, giving back and helping people in their communities and, and abroad. So that element, uh, you know, business opportunities, whether it was, you know, investment opportunity or job opportunities, job placement, um, and then just, you know, the, the research component, you know, obviously we need some, we need some, some real tangible research to, to validate all these anecdotal stories we're all sharing. So, um, you know, that component is not just, again, selfishly for the athletes. You know, that's the research we want to get out to the general public because, as we know, the, you know, we all need this. We all need this. And um, so, there's a, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a few arms, but, uh, you know, the, the cannabis and hemp portion of it, again, are just the... Uh, the small pieces to the overall, you know, um, conversation of wellness. So we really talk about mindfulness in the sense of, you know, meditation and, and, and yoga and these, you know, these mindful practices that help um, create healthier minds and people. You know, because as we know, it's a, uh, it's not just one one tool that's going to help us. It's it's a series of tools and behaviors and. I think going back to your, to your last comment about athletes and, you know, uh, in, 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 into the, the product line space, they also have this, the same disciplines to, 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 to take care of themselves and, and care for themselves. Unfortunately, their whole pro career and actually the whole careers in, in general have been um, essentially been misled. So, you know, they, they've been accustomed to these unsustainable ways of managing themselves because it's a business of getting back on the field or back on the ice. It's not about longevity and it's not about sustainability. Um, so, you know, if you can, you know, reprogram their minds with um, this discipline of how to take care of themselves, a lot of these guys have it in them to do that. It's just, uh, again, when you're in the business of sports, it's, not, it's, it's nothing to do with health, wellness, and, uh, and longevity. It's just about, you know, serving your position on the ice for that team in that moment, and, and you're very replaceable. So you don't think like that at the time because you're so set on, you know, uh, living out your dream and, and playing for the team and, and that whole bit. But once it's over, it's like, you know, you really have to reevaluate the things that you were taught and, and how am I going to make it in the, in the real world now and, and with, with the stuff I've learned. So Sure. Uh, final question, Riley, um, which I imagine you think about often, um, your sport, the NHL. If you look into the, the ice crystal ball, 
and where you think the educational transition will be when there is an opening to accept the new world of the health and wellness benefits of the cannabis plant. How do you see that playing out with the league of the sport that you dedicated so much of your life to? I'd like to think the NHL is probably the most progressive when it comes to the major sports leagues. Um, and I only say that because the NHL Alumni Association um, signed a deal with Canopy Growth and they invested $20 million to study um, uh, CBD in the brain, that concussions and brain health uh, for 100 retired players at least to start with. Um, so at least they're proactive in that regards where that data is supposed to essentially push the players association to say, hey, we got some tangible data here and this is how it's helping our players, which will ultimately, you know, move on to the NHL as an organization or um, it, itself. So I'd like to think, um, you know, being in Canada with their, say, the progressive laws, even it's even though it's kind of fake legalization, um, nonetheless, it's uh, it is progress, if you could call it that. Um, it's on the it's on the radar for all these all these teams in the NHL now. Um, so I'd like to think that, you know, the next year, year or two, at the very least, see see them stop testing for for THC. Um, I think until the U.S. federal government changes their stance, it, it, the, the complicated part is that border, um, you know, because they can't really uh, endorse it. Because then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, now we're telling our players to travel with this, and you know, it's uh, so there, there, there's it's it's complicated, but. Um, it, it's it's progressive, um, you know, compared to the NFL. Even though they're you know using the cannabis and hemp play as a bargaining chip for their collective bargaining agreement, at least in the NHL uh, world, there's some research, you know, going on. So you know, I think that's a, a start for sure. Uh, I'm I keep pounding at home. I mean, I I do my best to get in front of these guys. Uh, I've been in front of the original six alumni and just planting seeds. You know, there's a lot of these old guys that really don't have a clue. Sure. Um, they're hearing buzzwords, but there's still a lot of uh, unknowns and mis misinformation around it. So the more information we get out there, more education, um, even if it's not through the NHL itself or NHL alumni itself, it's one-on-one, -on -one, you know, just helping guys out individually. It's really what it's all about because it's word of mouth because this stuff really does work and help one guy, help another and help another. He helps another and, you know, it's contagious. So It is contagious. So what I'm hearing is that we'll see a, uh, a body check wellness and an Athletes for Care commercial in the Stanley Cup playoffs well before the Super Bowl. Oh, I, I would love to see that. It would be an absolute dream. I'd love to see it too. Well, <laughs> Riley, thank you so much for coming today. You're a pleasure. Um, you're an icon and you're someone that people my age and my young son at 15 can look up to. Thank you for everything you do to push the ethics, the values of this plant and of basic human rights revolving around compassion and the benefits for everybody. And thank you, Athletes for Care, and everything you do for that organization to providing advocacy and education uh, really pleasure to be with you today, and thank you for all you do. Thank you. appreciate it. Very nice.